it's recording. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this first instalment of uh, Star Wars Fan Reviews. Okay. This is Star Wars Fan Reviews The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a few questions for my, uh, my friendly Star Wars fan. Okay. Um, so I guess the first thing I'd probably ask you about the background. So wh when did you first get interested in Star Wars? What's your favourite film? That kind of thing. Oh, wow. Um, well, I think I was very little. Obviously, I was a, probably a little uh, too young um, to obviously catch the first film when it first came out. But, um, you know, I was on planet Earth when um, when the uh, first two sequels came out um, from the first trilogy. So I was really young and I'd probably say my favourite film out of the earlier instalment was... Um, Empire Strikes Back. It's very dark, um, lots of unanswered questions, lots of interesting um, characters. Obviously you first meet Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, who's one of my favourite characters. So yeah, it is an absolute favourite. So I'm coming to The Last Jedi with a lot of love for the franchise. I loved Force Awakens. Um, I do feel like this, this new batch of films a little bit you know, like the um, the prequels, I think there are Star Wars fans that love it and there are Star Wars fans that absolutely hate it, so, um, yes. <laughs> That's great, thank yeah. you. I just want to say at this point, we're going to go full spoiler here. So, yeah. to the fans who are watching this, if you haven't seen the film, please stop watching now <laughs> and like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go full spoiler, we're going to yeah. we're going to just go for it and... Um, so, so, Star Wars fan, <laughs> what, what, do you, what did you think of The Last Jedi? Oh, wow. Um, I suppose if I was going to sum it up in one word, it would be disappointed. Um, I think I do need to watch it again. Um, probably, you know, I, because I love Star Wars so much, I want to love it and... I'm hoping that with a second view, um, I will really enjoy it. I'll warm to it, but to be honest, I don't have high hopes at all. Um, and for a number of reasons, I suppose uh, Force Awakens, a lot of people said they didn't like it because they felt it was um, just a rehash of A New Hope. But actually, I just felt um, J.J. Abrams um, just he just captured the right level of humor the right um, you know cinematography it was just spectacular it just felt like a very safe pair of hands but again I do recognize there are a lot of Star Wars fans who didn't like that film but I loved it um, and I just felt that this director Ryan Johnson was very inexperienced and you know wasn't attuned to handling a huge franchise which obviously JJ was because he's, he's done uh, Star Trek um, and even Mark Hamill said he fundamentally disagreed with most of Ryan's decisions um, so I think that that um, obviously is a bit of a warning um, and I know a lot of people have said that Ryan Johnson has taken the franchise in a new direction and that's exciting but I've got to say I disagree. I just think there were a lot of inconsistencies and um, just lots of things that I didn't like, which I can of course go into more detail if you want me to. Please do. Okay, well, um, first of all it felt very long. It felt incredibly long um, and sometimes you can watch a film that might be two hours um, in length but it just doesn't feel like you've been sitting in a cinema for that long whereas this it just it just felt like it wasn't going anywhere it just meandered too much it didn't feel like it had um like there was much of a plan behind it so it did feel incredibly long um i thought there was far too much humor and slapstick i i really enjoyed the darkness of um 
no pun intended, but I really enjoy the darkness of uh, Star Wars, especially something like Empire Strikes Back. I know it's a kid's film and, you know, there will be a lot of people out there who just think, oh, for God's sake, uh, grow up, it's a kid's film, it's supposed to be a bit fluffy. But I think when you handle a franchise with such a huge history and the original viewers um, of the original series are obviously now in their 30s or 40s um, or indeed older, um, perhaps you do have to take that on board, you know, yeah there, there are going to be new fans coming to the film, kids, all that kind of stuff, but you do have to show a little bit of respect perhaps for, you know, the, the original viewers because they're the ones that are probably going to get more excited about this film than even the kids. Um, so there was certainly far too much humour and it was really silly humour as well. It wasn't, um, I don't know, a bit stupid. So for example, you know, they end up on this sort of casino land uh, place. I think it's called Camino Bite or something like that. Um, and BB-8 um, is treated as a little slot machine in the casino by what I can only describe as a drunken leprechaun. Um, so I thought uh, I thought the drunken leprechaun was in it, in of itself like a really stupid, cutesy character. You know, it's like burping in BB-8's face, and it just felt like maybe it was going for some kind of really childish humour that that's actually very out of place um, in Star Wars. It just doesn't fit fit it at all. And also there were moments where, um, say, Rey, for example, uh, said to Kylo Ren when they're, they're having this strange force connection and that, you know, they can see each other um, and she tells him to put a top on. Again, I just think it, it just seems like it undermines any of the threat of this particular character like Kylo and um, yeah it just doesn't doesn't work for me at all um, I've heard some people say that the humor is more like um you know the kind of humor that you would get in a Marvel comic franchise um, and I just think Star Wars isn't that kind of film for me personally that just doesn't work um, yeah, so Dark Star Wars is better for me. Um, I also thought that there are a lot of inconsistencies. Um, so, for example, um, where Luke Skywalker is currently residing, just as it was introduced in The Force Awakens, I just thought it was going to be another kind of Dagobah system, you know, middle of nowhere, he's completely isolated. But then in this film, it suddenly turned into a, you know, a sacred place for the Jedi and it just didn't seem to make any sense to me, it's, especially as in The Force Awakens, everybody's like, oh, he's missing, where's Luke, how are we going to find him? And then all of a sudden it turns out that he's been training people at this spot. So, well, he's not missing then, is he? Really? So yeah. this is the bit. So you yeah. you reckon that he, when he was training Kylo Ren, yeah, it was on that planet, on that island. Are you sure? Well, that's how I read it. Um, because um, he was talking about Kylo Ren collapsing the temple, and I'm sure um, Luke and Ray were actually sort of hanging out round round by that temple. So. I just thought that was a real inconsistency. I didn't like any of the creatures on that particular island as well. Like I didn't like the caretakers uh, and, um, you know, the porgs are, are cute and perhaps if they were the only sort of cutesy animals um, in this particular episode, I don't think I'd find them offensive at all, but just, it, it was just like the final straw on top, top, top of lots of other, um, silly creatures. And I just thought the caretakers again were put there for more for comic effect. Um, that reminded me of stuff from The Dark Crystal, which you know is a really nice sort of fluffy film. Um, oh, you mean like Fraggle Rock kind of character? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that that just didn't work for me. Um, I also thought the casino land, that whole subplot just didn't work. It didn't add anything to the film. 
um, and I also thought some of the um, sort of stories and and uh, moralising from that particular area was a bit uh, ham-fisted social justice really um, and you know I think I think um, Star Wars already has some interesting messages that you can take from it if if that's what you choose to do but yeah I just thought you know it was like oh animal cruelty oh you know anti-capitalism all that kind of stuff which you know of course I I don't support any animal cruelty I'm pretty not okay with capitalism capitalism as well but it just seemed very out of place and obviously it was all reserved for this particular landing on the casino land or Camino Bight or whatever it's called um, and uh, yeah it just it just seemed very laboured and forced um, so it, it just didn't work um, and I, I think because there was just so many subplots a lot of the characters weren't developed so you know you've got someone like Phasma who um, is played by a, a you know well-known actress for people who've watched things like Game of Thrones she's she turns up to all of the big interviews so you're expecting her to take on quite a, a big role in the franchise and she what sort of turns up you know all polished <laughs> and um, it's basically oh, sorry love you've um, you've polished your suit but there was no need really. <laughs> All polished up and nowhere to go. Yeah, exactly. Um, except on a great big hole, a big, great big fiery hole at the end, just to add insult to injury. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Phasma <laughs> fans. Um, she's hardly in it and we think she she uh, has met a sticky end. Um, uh, yeah, so also I just didn't like the treatment of a lot of the other characters but I like Luke I mean when we first meet Yoda in Empire Strikes Back yeah he's a bit of a nutter um, and you can kind of read into that and think well you know he's been on a Dagobah on his own for centuries or or however not centuries but you know decades um, so he's a bit a bit of a nutter but he he is then treated in a very sort of dignified so yeah, sorry, uh, so the camera cut out and you were talking about, about him being on the, on, on, an, this... on an island, on a planet where there are these like big kind of, not cows, but things that produce milk. Seal cow things, yeah, green milk and he's, you know, you sort of see him sort of guzzling down this green milk with glee, it's like, just squeeze some tits <laughs> you know and the thing is i actually thought that was hilarious but it what it was out of place it, it was it just out of place it was like yeah. it was like you know you get that thing where people are making movies now lots of people are making movies who've been making music videos that's their experience they've had like five years of making music videos and yeah. then they make movies and, and it's just like an hour and a half music video basically yeah like charlie's angels and things like that yeah um, yeah, I, um, I don't know, chucking the lightsaber, uh, that's, that could be quite an interesting um, point, you know, it's, um, it's quite an interesting um, way of looking at things, so when Ray gives him the lightsaber, he chucks it over his shoulder, which would have been great if the rest of the film hadn't been such a slapstick, Charlie Chaplin style um, movie you know it, it just didn't work because it, everything else that came after it just didn't have any um, weight or, or anything it was just silly that's that's the only way I can describe it. it's just very very silly um, I also thought as well in terms of Ray um, she seemed to have picked up a lot of the vernacular that Jedi use but obviously she hasn't she hasn't been around Jedi or she hasn't had any training so I just thought that was a bit presumptuous you know she was saying things like this um idea of conflict that um 
that um, Kylo Ren has, or Ben Sona, whatever you want to call him, um, but it just didn't seem right for her to use those kinds of phrases because she doesn't know this religion, this this um, movement really. You, you know what I think it's like? It's like a training montage. <laughs> it's that whole thing of right we've got somehow we've got to squeeze into five minutes somebody going from not really knowing anything to knowing everything yeah. but instead of doing it as a training montage which they didn't really they did it as her just sitting there for five minutes going oh i can feel it now i, I get it all yeah it was just i thought it was a very poor script as well i didn't think there was any depth to it i mean um, and also I, I just feel that there is actually no plan for this trilogy, which is fine, you know, there are some good TV series that don't necessarily have, have a plan, but it just seems that whichever director they have, you know, they're the ones who, deciding, who are deciding where this goes and actually that can, it could be good, but it could also be very problematic because, you know, maybe JJ had a vision on how things were going to go and basically Ryan is just going oh well actually I'm not interested in the things that you've set up so I'm just going to dismiss it and some of the things that I've seen that other Star Wars fans have been very um, upset about is obviously uh, Snoke's death there was no um, interest in the backstory that perhaps JJ had set up this mystery but Ryan just went Oh, we'll just kill him. It's, we'll put him in a big red room, uh, and then we'll just kill him. Um, and also Ray's parentage as well. Um, I think Star Wars fans had, or some Star Wars fans, were quite excited about the fact that perhaps she was part of this family tree. Um, you know, maybe she was related to the Skywalkers in some way, or someone interesting. And of course, that has been dismissed. Kylo Ren might be lying I don't know um, to be honest I, those things don't bother me so much it's just that I felt the director of this movie isn't a Star Wars fan that's what I felt I felt JJ he was a fan that's the film I would have made if uh, if I've been asked <laughs> Were you not asked? I wasn't asked, unfortunately. <sighs> I, you know, I didn't throw my hat in the ring, but next time perhaps. Um, but I just didn't feel that Ryan was a fan. I felt that Ryan was looking at this as a way of trying to make it very um, commercially viable you know lots of cute characters that perhaps you could turn into toys and I know that's just the nature of Star Wars anyway you get all the action figures that's how it goes but it's, it's just very very explicit this time that um, you know let's we've got to make it really really kid friendly and I think actually Star Wars has gone beyond a kids film because of the huge following that it has and I actually don't think it I don't think it's too uh, too much to actually ask people to bear in mind that you've got this huge adult following now for this for this film and it's not just a kids film but but I do recognize you know there are some people who would say well you know that's very much the age that we live in you know you're just looking for instant gratification that somehow these people owe you something um, but in some ways I do I do think as a Star Wars fan you are owed something in a way because without this huge following people wouldn't be thinking of making these movies still and that's not from the kids that's from the adults you know the reason that these um, subsequent trilogies are being made is because of the adults that watch these films you know it really um, really touch them um, so I don't know I, I don't I feel very disappointed and a bit disheartened at the whole experience um, I hope I can watch it again and feel better about it and warm to it a bit more but it really has made me not very hopeful for the next film that's going to come 
um, and perhaps Force Awakens, Rogue One, it's just the best that we're, we're going to get from this next bunch. But of course there is the, the um, solo movie as well coming out, so we'll see. Well, thank you very much, Star Wars fan. <laughs> um, got a nice long interview there, so I, I don't know whether I should inject some balance into this and just oh. to try and put some balance in the force, it's okay. like a sort of a BBC kind of interview. Um, I can be the uh, no, I won't even go there. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, I really enjoyed it. Mm. I thought it was quite funny. I thought that the epic moments were really epic and I really like I thought there were quite a few spine tingling moments in it mm -hmm. um, for me it was more than just an action movie um, but you know I just had this horrible feeling as I was going through it because I was enjoying it so much I thought oh god if I'm enjoying this they've really dumbed it down <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because you know I know like I am, I am a fan of all the movies, but I'm not a mega fan. I'm not mm. like, you know, I didn't have all the toys. It didn't blow me away. People that I knew really enjoyed watching it and I used to watch it with them, but I just, it just didn't transport me in the way that I know it transports some people. And I just, I had this feeling sat next to you that you weren't enjoying it that much. And I was saying, <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> so, um, so <laughs> Um, but it was really good to have the opportunity to go through it with you and um, and get that detailed kind of analysis and, and I'm really hoping that people will be interested to hear it and I think a lot of Star Wars fans are going to be listening to this and saying mm. yes, thank you, anonymous Star Wars fan. <laughs> so thank you very much. Yeah, no worries.